Well, good morning, boys and girls, and Merry Christmas. I hope that you've had an awesome Christmas. Now, there are many really cool things about Christmas. You might have different traditions, but most of us will enjoy a really nice family meal, or maybe we'll get some presents and the, some really cool things that we can appreciate about Christmas and being with family, and that's all really exciting. Now, I want us to understand, though, that while we can enjoy those things and they're not wrong, that's not the main reason for Christmas. Some people say the main reason for Christmas is about family and it's about giving. And those might be part of it. Those aren't wrong things. Those are good things to do. But again, that's not the real meaning of Christmas. The real meaning of Christmas is that we needed someone to rescue us from our sins. And God sent Jesus to come to earth to grow up and then die on the cross and pay the punishment for our sins that we deserve so that we could be rescued from our sin. That's what Christmas is really about. So we should understand the best gift ever is what God gave to us by giving Jesus, his son, as an offering for our sin. So I hope you enjoy your Christmas, but that you don't forget the real and true meaning of Christmas, that Jesus came to rescue us from our sin. Today, we're going to get started with an action memory verse, followed by the Bible story time, and then we'll finish with our Bible Zone praise song. Are you ready to get started? Okay, here we go. Our action memory verse comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 16, verse 13. And it says, You are the God who sees. Now this comes from a story in the Bible with a lady named Hagar and Hagar had been treated really badly to the point where she ran out into the wilderness and she was all alone and no one was there to help her. But then God showed up and God did help her and she realized that God is a God who sees everything. He sees the good things, the bad things, and he's always there to help us. And so that's why she said, you are the God who sees. So let's do it again with our actions. Are you ready? You are the God who sees. Great. So boys and girls, remember that God sees everything and he cares and loves you so much. Last week's video was called Daniel Served God. Let's see what happens in this week's video. Ahaz was not a good king. When he ruled over Judah, he did not do what was right. Ahaz made sacrifices and offerings to idols. Idols are people and things that are worshipped but are not the one true God. During Ahaz's time as king, two other kings, the king of Israel and the king of Aram, agreed to protect each other in battles. King Ahaz gave silver and gold to the king of Assyria. Assyria was a strong nation, and the king of Assyria agreed to protect Judah. One day, Ahaz heard that the king of Israel and Aram were coming to Judah. Their armies were going to attack Jerusalem. Ahaz was afraid. Everyone in Judah was afraid. But Ahaz didn't need to be afraid. He should have trusted God. God had promised his ancestor, King David, that he would be with his people. God sent the prophet Isaiah to talk to Ahaz. Isaiah said, pay attention and be quiet. Trust God. Be confident that God will take care of you. God had good news for Ahaz. The kings of Israel and Syria are planning to attack Jerusalem and make someone else king. But this won't happen, God said. If you do not trust me, you will not last. Isaiah said to Ahaz, listen. God is going to give you a sign to prove he is telling the truth. Here is the sign. A virgin will have a baby. She will name the baby Emmanuel. Isaiah told Ahaz that very soon, the kings of Israel and Syria would not be a threat to Judah. But, Isaiah continued, God's judgment is coming. He is going to judge you and the people of Judah. You have not seen judgment like this since Solomon's kingdom was divided into Israel and Judah. The king of Assyria and his strong army is coming to attack. On that day, 
God will send enemy armies to Judah. The Assyrians will come from the north, and the Egyptians will come from the south. They will be everywhere like flies and bees, Isaiah said. You won't be able to escape. God is present with us. He sent prophets to his people, even in captivity, and promised to send Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus fulfilled this promise when he came to earth and was born of a virgin. Jesus is our Emmanuel, God with us. Boys and girls, we've been learning how even when God's people, the nation of Israel, even when they sinned and disobeyed him, God was still with them. And God promised to always be with them no matter what. In today's story, we saw that God's promise to be with us came true. A promise that he had made hundreds of years before Jesus was born came true the day that Jesus was born. God had promised to send someone to rescue us from our sins. And that's exactly what happened when Jesus was born. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas. Through the whole Bible, God proved over and over that he can be trusted. And what we saw in this story is that the people often trusted God when things were going well, but then if something bad happened, it's like they forgot that they were able to trust God, they forgot his promises, and they started to sin and disobey him. And so God needed to send people to remind them that they need to obey him and that he can always be trusted. So King Ahaz reacted badly when things started to happen that he was scared about. He didn't trust God, and so God had to send the prophet Isaiah to remind him that God can always be trusted, and in fact, God used the prophet Isaiah to tell Ahaz about a promise that God was gonna keep, that was gonna happen many, many years later. And that promise was that God was gonna send Emmanuel. Now, now Emmanuel literally means God with us. So God was saying that, you know what? I promise I'm gonna send somebody to rescue you from your sins. And one of the names for Jesus is Emmanuel. So many, hundred year, many hundreds of years after this promise, Jesus was born. And Jesus is God. So when he was born on earth as a little baby, that literally is that promise of God coming true because God now lived amongst us as Jesus. God always wanted to be amongst his people, but sin messed that up and it separates us from God. But when Jesus came, he made a way for us to be free from our sin and for us to be brought back close to God again, so that when we trust in Jesus, one day we can be with him forever in heaven. So boys and girls, you might ask the question, well, how can we know that God is always with us? We can't see him. Well, there's a lot of things that we can't see that we just know are true. Um, I can't see the air, but I know it's there because I'm breathing it, right? Now, we know that God is with us because all throughout the Bible, he has proven over and over that we can trust him, that he always keeps his promises. So when he promises that he'll never leave us and never forsake us, we can know that that's true. And if we're honest, if we take some time to look back on our own lives, we can look at maybe some really sad times, some really difficult times that we went through, and it might have felt like God wasn't there with us. But we should know that because we live in a world that's messed up because of sin, sometimes we're gonna go through some bad stuff, but that doesn't mean God has left us. In fact, if we're able to look back at the things that he allowed us to go through, we can see that God is the one who helped us through it. So if you went through something bad before, but you're not now, well, thank God for that and know that he's always with you. If you're going through something bad now, you can trust that if God has come through before, if he's never left me before, well, I can trust him that he's gonna be with me even now. So we can always know that God is with us. So I'd like to close with this question. How can you know that God is with you the next time you feel afraid? Okay, boys and girls, it's time for our Bible Zone praise song. The song we're gonna do today is a Christmas song and it's called The Best Present Ever. 
So some of you might be really excited about some presents you got, whether it's games or toys or clothes or whatever it might be. And that's awesome. But those things over time, they're going to break down. They may get outdated. There's things that happen to them. But the best present ever is Jesus because we always need Jesus, whether we realize it or not. And so God gave us the best present ever by sending Jesus to help us to be forgiven of our sins by dying on the cross for us. So he's the best present ever. Let's remember that as we sing this song, Best Present Ever. Well, boys and girls, before we close in our prayer, I want to remind you if you have any questions at all about anything you saw or heard today, or anything you might want to know about God or the Bible, I'd love to help answer those questions. So you can email me at the email address below, but make sure you get mom or dad's permission first. All right, let's close our eyes so we don't get distracted. We're going to pray to God. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for Christmas, and I thank you for all the awesome things we're able to enjoy. But God, I pray that we would understand the real meaning of Christmas, and that you sent Jesus to pay the punishment for our sin that we deserve. And I thank you, Jesus, that you love us so much that you were willing to leave heaven and to go all, through all of that so that we can be made right with you again. God, I pray that we would also understand that even though sometimes your promises take a long time for us to see um, come true, you always keep your promises, just like when you promised you would send a rescuer to save us from our sins, many years later you sent Jesus. So the same way, we should trust you in every situation that we go through. Help us to do that, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Boys and girls, thank you so much for watching today's video. And remember, God is in all places at all times, and he's always with his people. 
I'll see you next week.